If there's one thing Seattle is known for, it's the insane coffee scene. As the number one city for coffee consumption, it's safe to say that the city runs on caffeine. Whether it's a daily cup on the go or a weekend treat with a friend, we're always drinking coffee. Today, I'll be trying out some of the most famous spots, revolutionary to local coffee enthusiasts. Let's get into it. Hello, we're here in the first destination, Starbucks Reserve and Roastery, the famous Starbucks Reserve, the first location. There's also one in New York, Chicago, and Tokyo, but this one's the first and they have a huge menu. And yeah, let's go check it out. So this spot was built in 2014, just nine blocks away from the original Starbucks, offering coffee lovers a unique experience behind the art and craft of coffee. But be prepared, the menu is intense and you may get overwhelmed. Inside there is the main coffee bar, the mixology bar for all your handcrafted cocktails, and then my personal favorite, the princey bar for all your artisanal pizzas and baked goods. What's unique about this spot is they actually ground all their coffee beans on site, and it's a pretty cool experience to watch. Unfortunately, that along with the experience bar is closed until further notice, but the interior design and gift shop within itself is worth a stop in. I ordered the cold brew flight with Guatemala roast from the main coffee bar and although I wasn't able to dine in, the baristas still go out of their way to make sure you enjoy every step of the to-go process. We were told by the guy in there that this is the freshest coffee because they, they do all their coffee beans like, through the pipeline. Then the nitrogen cold brew. Another cool thing that the Starbucks Reserve does is they have pizza there. We got probably the greasiest one there. <laughs> okay, so just a price overview. Everything's obviously a little bit more expensive here than your traditional Starbucks. But I think it's just because you're really paying for the freshness, the experience, you know having this like unique spot. So the cold brew flight was $8 for, you know, just a little bit, but I think it's really more just to like appreciate the taste of the coffee, you know, instead of really getting like something that's gonna like sustain, it's just more, you know, to appreciate it. We spent more on food than we did on coffee, so I think that was a mistake on our part. So in the future, I think we would spend more on coffee because that's really what the reserve is known for. Now we are on to the next stop, which is Storyville Coffee in Pike's Place. Tucked away beside Pike's Place is Storyville Coffee. If you didn't know it was here, you might miss it, but it's a beloved spot for premium coffee. I ordered the vanilla latte with their house-made coconut cashew milk, and if you're lucky enough, you might be able to snag a spot in their cozy yet intimate setting. And while this coffee is a little bit more expensive than your average brand, I can't deny its rich, smooth texture and warm, creamy taste. We left Storyville because they're not doing their, um, they're not doing indoor seating. They have a capacity. I think it's only like 10 people or something like that. So pretty hard to find a spot to sit down, especially in a crowded spot like this. But we're just gonna walk the market. Latte. And we happen to see this view right at Golden Hour, but the next stop is the first original Starbucks. Now this location is notorious for having long lines, even if you go after the market is closed, but this is the only spot that still has the original logo and exclusive merchandising. We are at the first Starbucks um, and we waited pretty much almost a full hour to get in here and it's after the market is closed. I just got a pink drink. At the end of the night, didn't really feel like doing any caffeine this late. But being completely honest, I don't know if it's really worth it besides just doing it one time. And then after that, you can check it off your bucket list because it's all the same drinks, it's just exclusive merchandise and then the original logo was there. So, you know, it's a cool little experience. And now on to the next place. Good morning, it is the next day. Today we are headed to Belltown to try our first coffee shop of the day, Elm Coffee Roasters. Now there's actually two separate locations. One is their original Pioneer Square location and the other one is in Belltown. They opened in 2015, quickly becoming a local favorite with their partnerships and hospitality. So I just picked up two things from there. I got, I got their house meat chai with oat milk and then they're uh, one of their 16 ounce bottled lattes with oat milk as well. I think that's really cool. You can kind of like save it for later. So I'll probably just like put this over my fridge. This also comes in 64 ounce bottles. So 
It was a cute little vibe in there. It was very much like a grab and go kind of vibe, like in and out. And it's not as touristy as like Pike's Place. You kind of have like, I mean, there is a lot of like homeless life here. There's a lot of like busy people. So it's a different vibe for sure, but I'm gonna test out this latte. This is very well made. It's not like overly sweet like some chais. You definitely get that like spice taste. I think Elm is definitely like a local's favorite. So if you're here to try the local experience, this place would definitely be for you. But yeah, on to the next spot. So we've now made it to Fremont, a different part of Seattle, but he's home to the troll under the bridge right there. So a really good spot to go to. This place has a huge lines. So, and I'm even going on a Sunday. So it's definitely, it's definitely gonna be worth your while. Now this spot is definitely one of my favorites. It's located right under the Fremont Bridge in this rustic chic location of beautiful ambiance, friendly people, and handcrafted lattes. I ordered the matcha latte with soy milk and it was amazing. I just got my latte and I thought I'd come over to the troll and take a sip. Okay, I know when I taste a good matcha and this is a good matcha. You can tell it's just like pure matcha. None of that like added sugar and whatever else they put in there. Soy milk and matcha just really complement each other. So yeah, this is the end of my little coffee adventures. Last stop here. And let me know where I should go next because there's still plenty of places I missed. Let me know down in the comments if I missed any of your favorite coffee shops and I could definitely make a part two. But hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.